Algebra is all about the relationships between symbols and what those symbols represent. Algebra does not make any claims about how these relationships are computed. It only defines rules for manipulating these symbols. From the perspective of the mathematician, the symbol itself is entirely arbitrary and could be anything. Question. Why letter E was used for the basis? Uh, sorry? Why letter E? Why the letter E was used? Well, um, this was actually introduced uh, by Clifford uh, in 1880, and he died young, so I never got a chance to ask him. Uh, <laughs> But, but it is a lucky coincidence um, uh, since, uh, for example, in my own implementation, Ganja Yes, I'm actually overloading scientific E notation. Um, and so I was really happy that they picked E. From the perspective of whoever picked the symbol, it may hold deep meaning, be it philosophical, cultural, functional, and more. So instead of thinking of these symbols and collections of symbols as something real, Think of them as a label placed on something that is real, a label that you drew in some particular way. When a symbol is defined, it is initially a free variable. A free variable is not bound by anything other than the way you drew it and where you drew it. Nothing has a bearing on it. It represents an infinitely malleable idea. We can ascribe properties or more labels to this label. Or if I say this symbol exists within E3, we have now bound this variable by manipulation in 3D Euclidean space. Higher dimensionality results in a higher degree of manipulation. When you do this, equations, functions, white papers, new objects, and even new languages start to become a little more understandable. The next thing you'll notice is how equations are spatially arranged. This spatial arrangement is also seemingly arbitrary, where often intuition was used to choose the location of symbols relative to other symbols instead of some set notation, like in matrix algebra. This freedom to spatially arrange symbols around existing ones is often a major hindrance in mathematics, as it requires the reader to understand exactly which symbols mean what. But it also allows people to work deep within frameworks without being initially concerned with the notation those frameworks chose. This reveals one of the beautiful facts about Lisp we mentioned in another video. Lisp puts all equations into a parenthesized prefix notation. This allows you to view the graph structure of and structurally compare algebraic statements. By placing many algebras into a rigid, comparable structure, you will reveal deep connections between unrelated areas of mathematics while archiving them. We can all choose to represent the same idea using different symbols, but when reviewed from an outside perspective, everything we make and everything that can be made is repeatable in similar ways.